Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance, the channel that always has your back and tells it like it is. Today's video is going to be all about Charles Hoskinson and Cardano and the ADA token. Now, I will tell you right up front, I did more research on this video than I've done since I was in college, and that was about 17 years ago. <laughs> so, I did a lot, and, and quite frankly, when I was watching Charles on the Cardano website, Whiteboard, what Cardano is all about, I felt like I was back in college, and it was pretty awesome, I've got to admit. He is, he is very intellectual, very smart guy. He could easily be a college professor. So I hope to have a fantastic video for you today with a lot to learn all about the background, what Cardano is, as well as towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you the bottom line, what I think the value is here, what I think it could be worth. Is it a great investment opportunity for you? That is all going to be in today's video. So. If you are a first time viewer, make sure to hit the subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications so you know when I'm posting time sensitive videos just like this one. And as always, if you like today's video, make sure to smash the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And with that, let's get it going. So as you can see from the thumbnail, I found this fantastic painting of Charles Hoskinson with the cigar. <laughs> and, and quite honestly, I've seen a few videos with him uh, where people have interviewed him on YouTube. I personally would love to interview the guy. He comes across like a very awesome, knowledgeable guy. Uh, but I thought that was that fantastic thumbnail picture with him and the cigar. So just wanted to put that out there. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, Charles Hoskinson. He is a mathematician who studied analytic number theory, okay? Um, he is also a left-handed academic who loves peer review. As somebody who um, appreciates education, college, you know, continued learning, higher learning, uh, some of these little things like that I pick up on, and I think that is absolutely awesome, all right? Now, he is known for one, being one of the eight original founders of Ethereum. And depending on who you ask, uh, he left after a dispute about accepting venture capital and the need for more formal governing structure. Okay, so I've seen it posted on Twitter where somebody said he was fired from Ethereum. Uh, Wikipedia says he left Ethereum. Maybe if I interview him someday, we'll get a straight answer. Regardless, it doesn't really matter because he's on the bigger and better things with Cardano now, okay? Now, after Ethereum, a former colleague named Jeremy Wood approached him about forming a new company called Input Output Hong Kong, or IOHK, a research and engineering company that would build cryptocurrencies and blockchains. So the main project of IOHK is the Cardano network and ecosystem and the resulting cryptocurrency ADA, okay? So what is Cardano? Well, Cardano launched in 2017 and it's a cryptocurrency network and open source project that aims to run a public blockchain platform for smart contracts. Now, ADA is the token of the Cardano network as I stated earlier. Cardano was actually named, I didn't know this until researching, after the Italian Girolamo Cardano. I probably butchered that. Girolamo Cardano, okay? Uh, who lived from 1501 to 1576, who was considered a polymath, which essentially is somebody whose knowledge spans a substantial number of subjects known to draw on complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. So this is kind of a cool little shout out they're doing here, right? Now Cardano is famous, uh, this, is the, this is the original guy, uh, for his achievements in algebra, as well as he invented the combination lock, the gimbal, and the Cardano shaft with universal joints. He was also, this is funny, an accomplished gambler and chess player. Interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the token Ada was named after Ada Lovelace, who is known as, quote, 
the first to recognize the full potential of computers and as one of the first computer programmers. She lived from 1815 to 1852. She actually died at really young. Um, but interesting, the throwbacks here, right? So now for awareness, Cardano was originally launched with a market cap of 600 million, right? So what is Cardano's advantage over Ethereum or Bitcoin, right? So Cardano is secure like Bitcoin, but doesn't take anywhere near the computing power. And what they, what, the way they do it, they have their own system that they call Ouroboros, okay? Now, Bitcoin is considered, for those who don't know, a first gen generation blockchain where you can't customize transactions, making it too slow and inflexible, while Ethereum is a second generation blockchain where you can change the terms, but you can't scale and the governance is bad. And Charles mentions this, okay? So sustainability doesn't work well at all on projects. And you have multiple coins uh, from the same coin unnecessarily, so he doesn't like that. So he gives examples of Bitcoin to Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum to Ethereum Classic. Uh, it seems there's a better way to do it, right? So therefore, Cardano is considered a third generation cryptocurrency uh, because, and network, excuse me, currency and network, because it uses design principles to improve upon issues faced by other currencies, including scalability, interoperability, and regulatory compliance. And by the way, uh, as I stated earlier, there is an absolutely fantastic video of Charles whiteboarding this entire thing over the course of an hour <clears throat> on Cardano's website, okay? Now, claims to fame. So in 2017, IOHK helped the University of Edinburgh launch a blockchain lab, okay? In 2018, Cardano teamed up with the Ethiopian government to deploy their technology throughout the country. That's <clears throat> pretty impressive. That's an entire country, right? In 2019, Charles signed a memorandum of understanding with the Minister of Education from the country of Georgia. So this is near Russia, the country of Georgia, to use Cardano to build a credential verification system. Now, New Balance, the shoemaker, plans to use distributed letter blockchain to track the authenticity of its new basketball shoe using Cardano. Now, some recent news on Cardano uh, that just came out of the last couple days. Um, this was as of a couple days ago from Cointelegraph that the price had rallied 139% following smart contract implementation. So according to Cointelegraph, their, quote, successful testnet integration of smart contract functionality and plans to enter the DeFi space, unquote, are what is fueling the surge. So they tested it, it works, they're getting into DeFi. As I mentioned in my Aave video, that's why Aave is absolutely exploding right now. It's DeFi. Uh, the, the, the coins, the, the ecosystems that are into DeFi, they're gonna be the ones that you really need to keep an eye on for your portfolio, okay? Now, the amount of ADA currently staked is also at a record 72% of the supply, or 22.6 billion tokens. So that's impressive. So, for those who don't know, Cardano has a roadmap, and this is on their website. Number one is Byron, the foundation. Number two is Shelley, decentralization. And by the way, these are all um, based on famous people from the past. Uh, number three is Gogan. This is smart contracts. Gogan is the big one that is going to be launching uh, potentially at the end of this month, February 2021, or early next month, March of 2021. Smart contracts. This is the DeFi piece. This is the money maker that's coming out at the end of this month, okay? That's why Cardano is, is starting to really go up in value, is Gogan is getting close. They have a record staked. 
and they just had a successful test, meaning that Gogan is really close. Gogan is the main net, all right? Now, after Gogan, they have two more. Basho, which is scaling, and then Voltaire, the last one, which is governance, okay? Now, let's talk about the Gogan main net. So, the, the, I'm gonna go down the rabbit hole. Let me just say that a little bit on a few of these things. Uh, but we'll, we'll bring it all back for you. So if I lose you a little bit, stick with me, okay? So the Gogan mainnet encompasses the integration of smart contracts, adding the ability to build decentralized apps or dApps, all right? Now, through their high-level domain-specific language, DSL, Marlowe, and their Marlowe Playground, which is an application-building platform, Gogan will simplify the process of creating financial applications for smart contracts. Now, Gogan will also add a multi-currency ledger, which will enable users to create new natively supported tokens. So remember that too, there's gonna to be new tokens that are generated from this, okay? A lot of potential here uh, for your portfolio investing, okay? Now, the tokens will support the creation of new cryptocurrencies on Cardano, including the tokenization of digital and physical assets. So, what does it all mean, Jesse? Well, here we go. Number one, it means that the Cardano project is absolutely massive. The way that they are building this in phases, my background is corporate America. I know how long it takes these things to come in. It takes a long time. You know, you're dealing with uh, people all around the world who are working on this. Uh, it, there's a lot that goes in this. This is a massive project. That's why they're building it in phases, okay? Now, it also means that the Cardano project represents a paradigm shift to the third generation network and ecosystem. So that is absolutely huge, okay? So this is a shift, right? Big deal. It also means that it's going to take a significant amount of time to accomplish everything Charles and team aim to do. However, with the rollout of Gogan, they will be over halfway there. And they have deep pockets to get the job done. And Cardano continues to go up in value, making their treasury and deep pockets deeper. So if they need additional help, uh, they can bring on additional help. If they need resources, they can get those resources. So it's possible that they may be able to speed up their schedule. All right, just throwing that out there. Now, it also means that it will significantly impact where Cardano sits on the fees chart. Located, you can find this yourself at cryptofees.info for anyone out there who's interested, where it's currently generating, as of today, around $4,000 per day in fees, where you wanna guess how much Ethereum's making? 20 million. <laughs> so so they got, they, there's some room here for them to go up big time, right? And when Gogan comes out, that's what's gonna start changing this. And then you're gonna see Cardano moving up the fees chart. And that's very important, all right? So the bottom line is Cardano represents a massive potential as a long-term investment. And while you're going long, you can stake it in the meantime, just as 72% of all of the tokens have already been staked, generating passive income and further increasing your position, all right? So the way I see it is if Charles doesn't get caught up in the minutia <laughs> and continues to move the project forward, it has wide-ranging implications in the crypto space. I believe that 100%. Now, could it be valued higher or equal to Ethereum or Ethereum 2.0 someday? Sure it could, okay? Now, Bitcoin, for those who don't know, started trading in July of 2010. And Bitcoin is capped at 21 million coins. That's all there will ever be. There will never be more Bitcoin. This is why all of the institutions are getting into Bitcoin now. For anybody who follows Michael Saylor and his World Now conference that he finished just last week, uh, the first person he interviewed was Ross Stevens. They have the, all of the interviews 
of the, the entire conference on MicroStrategy's website, and you can watch them. And I watched Ross Stevens talk about exactly that, that the reason Bitcoin's so great is because it's capped. So Ross thinks over the next 10 to 20 years, Bitcoin will rise while the dollar goes down, and that will create a fundamental question for every CEO out there of do they continue to hold fiat currency or do they switch to a new standard that's Bitcoin? So remember that. So the reason they're doing it is because Bitcoin is deflationary, which is the opposite of the dollar. So at the dollar, the Federal Reserve can print more whenever they want. You have no control. Bitcoin, on the other hand, it's set. There will never be more. We can keep slicing it further and further, right? So, you know, for anybody who's just getting into crypto, just because Bitcoin's trading around 45,000 doesn't mean you need 45,000 to buy it. You can buy it for 10 bucks, but you're gonna get 0.0000001, and that will continue to happen with Bitcoin, okay? But something else here with Bitcoin is they continue to take all of the uh, supply out of the market. Demand will go up. So as supply goes down, demand goes up. That's what's happening right now. So with Tesla's massive news the other day that they purchased $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, huge. And everybody's talking that Apple very well could be next. So Apple hasn't said anything, but if, if they do, massive, right? Uh, these, are, these are shifts that are happening in the industry. So going back to what I was talking about, Bitcoin came out in 2010 and has capped 21 million coins. Ethereum started trading in July of 2015, but is uncapped. So more tokens are made each year. Think of the dollar, right? So whereas Bitcoin is deflationary, Ethereum is inflationary. Now, in fact, it's pretty difficult to actually determine how many Ethereum tokens there are. It's, it's extremely difficult. There, there are some really good articles out there that, that try to figure it out. And I don't know if anybody clearly knows. It's, it's kind of crazy, right? So honestly, I think a lot of the value in Ethereum is simply because many people are ignorant to cryptocurrency in general. They just don't know. No one knows yet. This is too new. We don't know, right? And so I think that they sort of just tag on to Ethereum because they go, oh, that's Bitcoin's little brother. Give me some of that, right? And that's what they do. But they don't really know the back, the, the inside, the inner workings. They don't know that Ethereum is uncapped. They don't know those things, right? So these, these are critical things to know. I actually didn't even know that before this video. <laughs> so full disclosure, that was one of the things I learned. I was like, holy cow, right? So what that means is that in the future, further down the road, as Cardano gains market share, Ethereum could absolutely potentially lose market share. Now, could it keep getting better? Yes. Could people keep tagging on? Yes. I view right now just as if the stock market were nine years old. The crypto market is nine years old. So regardless of all those things, could Ethereum continue to go up? Yes, it could. <laughs> but the fundamentals say that it, it is not deflationary, it's inflationary, okay? Now to Cardano. So Cardano started trading in September of 2017 and is capped at 45 billion tokens. So significantly more tokens than Bitcoin, but the fact that it's capped means that it is deflationary in the long run. That's critical, all right? Now, as Cardano continues to rise in value, could the timelines be sped up as I mentioned earlier? Yes, they could. So it, it keeps going up in value. As they get more and more resources, this, this thing could really, really speed up and get some momentum. That's true. So. Is Cardano the Ethereum killer? I'm not so sure. Uh, is the tech better in Cardano? Yes, that's a resounding yes. Is the cap on supply better in Cardano? Yes, that's also a yes. Can it do what Ethereum and Bitcoin can't? Yes, that's, that's a yes. Now for the nose. Is it fully functional as of today, February 2021? No, it's not. Does it have the PR of Bitcoin and Ethereum? No, it doesn't. Is it on all of the exchanges? No, it's not. It's not on Coinbase. It's not on some of the major exchanges. It is not there yet. But 
that may also create an opportunity if you can get it on one of the other exchanges. Because when it does go to Coinbase, it is going to go up even higher. All right. So by the way, uh, for anyone who's watching, uh, please leave uh, any of the exchanges where you have found Cardano in the comments. So I did this on my Justin Tron and TRX video. I said, hey, anybody out there, tell me where I can buy TRX. And lo and behold, there are actually a ton of options that I was completely unaware of. I actually pursued one of them, the Trust Wallet. I've got myself some Tron now. <laughs> so uh, for, for everybody who's watching this, leave a comment in there if you know somewhere else that hasn't been mentioned in the comments or give a like on, on which, which places are the easiest to get Cardano. I myself have purchased Cardano through Crypto.com. That's where I get it. Uh, but you may have a better option. So I'd love to hear about that. Please leave those in the comments, right? So putting a price target on a deflationary asset that isn't fully functional is tricky, right? So could it 10x? Yes. Could it 100x? Yes. So think of this now. Follow me. If Ethereum is trading at roughly $1,700 right now, and it is inflationary, and Cardano is at roughly 70 cents, but is deflationary, if you simply took 1,700 and divided it by 70 cents, you would have a 2,428x. That could happen within the next five years, 10 years, we are talking an investment. This could be one of the investments of our lifetime. I think Cardano could be there right along with Aave. Um, it, it is a massive opportunity, massive opportunity, okay? So I see no reason why it couldn't go that high, especially when it is capped and staked, all right? Now, I think my prediction is that the price will really start rising with the Go, excuse me, Gogan rollout due to DeFi. So once they, once they get into that DeFi space, it is off to the races, folks. So th that's what's going on here. That is today's video. That is everything I learned about Cardano. I would highly recommend it if you were looking at investing into Cardano. Go to the Cardano website. See what this thing is all about. Watch Charles Hoskinson whiteboard this. I would love to sit down with him and drink a beer. So Charles, if you ever watch this video, if you want to sit down with me, drink, dr drink a beer, you could even drink it on your end on Zoom and we could do some kind of interview. That would be absolutely awesome. Uh, I love being around people like him. He's got that factor that you could just sit in a room and listen to him talk about this for hours and he, and he could go through the rabbit hole of all these different things that you never even knew about. So I'm highly impressed with Charles Hoskinson. I really don't care how he left Ethereum, doesn't matter at all. What they're doing now with Cardano is extremely impressive. This is third generation technology. As I've stated in other videos, this is like going from Microsoft to a Apple iOS, right? It's, it's a totally different thing. A lot of efficiencies, a lot can be gained here. You know, in the long run, who's the more valuable company? Well, as of right now, it's Apple. <laughs> so uh, things to think about, right? So again, it is an absolutely awesome time to be a cryptocurrency investor. I hope you're all excited about this one, just like I am. I am stoked for, for Cardano, and I wanna get me some more Cardano. I am gonna keep adding on this one. There are a couple of these Cardano, Aave, Bitcoin, um, you know, even Ethereum, you know, that, that you could probably steadily add week after week. And by the way, I'm going to put a video out on investment strategy here because there's different ways to do this. There's, there's day trading it or there's long-term hodling. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if there's necessarily a right way. And maybe, you know, certain coins represent long-term where other coins may not represent long-term. So it just sort of depends. But I will do a future video on that maybe later this week or next week. So that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. It is all about Charles Hoskinson and Cardano, ADA. Please leave anything in the comments uh, that you, you feel I may have missed or uh, anything that you wanna share with anybody. It is an awesome opportunity, and I am so glad that I got to share that with you today. 
So as always, this is Jesse with Keeping It Real. I am also on Twitter at KIR Finance on Twitter. I post uh, whenever I drop videos. I also repost a lot of really interesting things to come up on Twitter. So follow me there if you wanna stay up on anything that is happening in the crypto market. That'd be absolutely awesome. And I will see you on the next one, all right? Later.